fire rips through Great Falls High tonight where this arson investigation stands. Plus, the mystery surrounding a missing parking meter key solved. Well, sort of. We'll take a look at plans for paid parking downtown. And later we catch up with a Great Falls graduate whose Ivy League college experience is now all virtual. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Also tonight, a warning about the dangers of wildfires this weekend. Thanks for making MTN a part of your Friday evening. I'm Keely Van Mittendorp. And I'm Hallie Schwinnard. First tonight, a fire at Great Falls High School. Right now, Great Falls Fire Rescue is investigating what caused it, but it appears to be suspicious. They say it broke out late last night. The arson task force is working with the Great Falls Public School District. They're looking for two juvenile males who were seen leaving the area shortly before the fire was reported. We spoke with the superintendent, Tom Moore, about the damage, and he says he's thankful nobody was hurt. Not a lot of damage. It, again, um, as I said, I was thankful that it was fairly contained and limited. Um, there's obviously struck, there is some damage done to the building, to the school, and, uh, and it is going to have to be repaired and it will cost money. So this is obviously a, a serious problem. It just, I'm thankful that it wasn't more serious. Anyone with information is asked to call the fire department. And the hot, dry weather has fire departments around the state warning people about the dangers of wildfire this weekend. Fire danger is high in the forest around Butte, and high temperatures and high winds can easily start wildfires. People recreating this weekend are asked to be careful when starting campfires, which could quickly turn into a wildfire. If you're going camping and recreating is to make sure that the fires are always out, uh, campfires, make sure that you're barbecuers and things like that when you're cooking outside that aren't close to any kind of combustibles or anything like that. And just a, a lot of a common sense goes a long way. And people are asked to immediately call 911 if they see brush fires and get out safely. Well, it certainly was another hot day. Meteorologist Elizabeth Copeland joins us now with a first look at our forecast. It's a beautiful day outside in most of north central northeast Montana to end the work week. Definitely a hot one though as temperatures skyrocket back into the 90s this afternoon of our opportunity bank ICAM and Helena. Well, we have a cloud or two in the sky. Those are not producing any rain though. Just to our southwest of the capital city, a few more of those showers are brewing, but otherwise we're seeing the blue skies and much calmer conditions today and much warmer. We're actually still on that warming trend as we head through the weekend. Besides some areas of the northeast, which are quite a bit cooler this afternoon than they were this time yesterday, we are expecting some storms to develop, especially across the northeast corner a little later this evening. So we'll be watching for those as those start popping up especially as we head into about the nine o'clock hour. But tonight, otherwise partly cloudy 63, a very warm overnight expected for the Great Falls area. But we do track warmer weather into the weekend before finally seeing some relief from that heat as we get some fresh, cool air from the west. We'll track when that moves in coming up here shortly in our extended forecast. Thanks, Elizabeth. We'll check back in with you soon. Well, the saga of the lost meter key in downtown Great Falls finally has a resolution. After the key disappeared back in March, the city removed parking meters from the downtown area. Now that it's back, the future of parking enforcement is unclear. We can't even write this stuff in Hollywood. We found the key that went missing key to the meters and that was the whole reason why we removed the meters parking meters in downtown great falls were taken away after the key went missing presumed stolen until this week when it was found near the elevator of a parking garage that elevator happened to be broken so we had the elevator company there fixing it and when they opened that door to the equipment room they felt the door catch on something and so he looks down and he sees this key and he's like oh well okay so he picked it up and when he was done he gave it to the staff there in the north garage and they're like oh my god even with the key returned the future of metered parking in the city isn't clear we were so far down the road of coming up with alternative solutions to replacing you know the meters that it's kind of like well do we want to walk that back and and not do any of it or is there other things for us to consider like, well, the meters were super old and we weren't going to be able to get parts anyway, so go ahead and keep replacing them. Regardless of what the city decides, the meters provide an important source of revenue for the parking development program. 
all of the revenue that is generated by meters, by parking leases, by citations, every penny of it stays in the parking program. Raymond says that money is roughly 60% of the program's revenue each year. In Great Falls, Matt Holzaffel, MTN News. And the city says that they do plan to put meters back up eventually, although it's unclear if they will use the old meters or implement a whole new system. Throughout the week, we've talked about plans and protocols for the upcoming school year, from kindergarten enrollment to rural schools and busing policies. Today, MTN's Shannon Newth introduces us to a Great Falls High grad whose plans at an Ivy League college out east have been uprooted. Throughout the summer, Zach Shermley has been working at KRTV behind the scenes and on the news staff. Thanks to COVID-19, his summer stay has been extended. The soon-to-be sophomore at Columbia University will continue classes right here in Great Falls online. It's an adjustment that started back in the spring. It was a great experience. You know, I loved my first year. Um, it's unfortunate that it was cut short. The Ivy League education looks a little different virtually from Montana than on the New York City campus. It was nice to get a taste of the open spaces again and the fresh air. Course material, though, is only part of the college picture. Sitting and listening to this person who knew so much about this topic, he could just go on and on and on. He was encyclopedic, you know, and that is not the same over Zoom. And being able to raise your hands and ask questions is not the same over Zoom. Having conversations with your peers and other students is not the same over Zoom. Zach says he feels fortunate to have the resources to do online coursework, even as his view of what college looks like has been forced to change. I wanted to go to the New York that I signed up for, you know, and I wanted to live at the New York I signed up for, and this was not what I signed up for, unfortunately. I feel for all the people that have had to stay there. In the meantime, he'll take classes while also working on his career-focused job this fall. In Great Falls, Shannon Newth, MTN News. Zach says he has a number of classmates who are deferring this year or the upcoming year because of changed plans or costs. Well, according to the Montana Coalition of Home Educators, homeschooling grows annually. Recent numbers show above 5,000 students in Montana are currently homeschooled. The Central Montana Organization for the Advancement of Homeschooling also reports an increased interest in homeschool options this year. They estimate locally that includes two dozen families. This week, MTN News sat down with two women who are already teaching their, their children from home and one mother who chose it for her daughter this upcoming year. During our conversation, Conversation, we learned there are countless resources available for support. People are nervous and that's why we're here. We're here to help with curriculum, what works, what doesn't, and everything in between. It makes me feel relieved just to hear that it's okay, there's different options, it, I have choices, I have connections, website to reach out to. I'm actually a little bit excited, like a little bit excited to know that maybe we'll succeed. <laughs> well, you will. You will. And tonight at 10, we'll hear more from Samoa about what it takes to succeed as a homeschool parent and their advice for families who are starting homeschool this year. Despite summer sales, back to school presents a financial challenge for many families, and that challenge is even greater for those experiencing financial hardship. That's why Great Falls Rescue Mission needs your help to make sure families in need are well supplied this school year. Effective immediately, you can donate any types of school supplies to the rescue mission between now and the week before the rally kicks off on August 23rd. The rescue mission executive director says he hopes to collect 750 backpacks this year to distribute to all children in need. We make them age-specific, gender-specific backpacks so that you know, Billy gets the one that he wants and Susie gets the one that she wants. Um, but it gives them exactly what the school district says they should have so that they can start out the school year. You can head to our website to find out what supplies are needed for each grade level. Coming up, a new facility providing a new approach to care. How veterans are liking their new clinic in Great Falls. Welcome. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News.
After weeks of preparation, the new VA clinic in Great Falls held its grand opening event today. MTN's Isaiah Dunk takes us to the ceremony. The new Great Falls VA clinic held its grand opening Friday morning with a ceremony dedicated to veterans and clinic staff. The event was open to vets and the public with remarks from Montana politicians, tribal leaders, and Montana VA representatives. Small groups were offered tours to see the new facility, which is the first in the Montana VA system to implement the patient-aligned care team model. So now we have a facility that's worthy of our veteran service here in Great Falls, Montana. Now it's going to be uh, up to us to make sure that the facility uh, meets the needs of our veterans in north central Montana and care continues to be of the highest quality. Vets who used the old clinic were impressed with their first look. This hospital here is a lot nicer than the one that, uh, the old one because it was just, it was just old. <laughs> so yeah, and this is one that's beautiful. I mean, it's, it's really, it's amazing how good it looks inside. The new space is all on one floor and effectively doubles the capacity of the old one across town. With the new model, vets no longer have to move around the building to get their care. Instead, comprehensive care teams come to one room for the veteran. This new clinic, man, it's nice. Um, it's got all the stuff that the staff needs, got up-to-date stuff. You don't have to go to another room to find your equipment. It's, it, I'm sure the staff will love it. I know as veterans will, because we don't have to go anywhere. We go to one room and we get to stay there. In addition to packed teams, the clinic offers telehealth, laboratory, and home-based care within 100 driving minutes of Great Falls, among other services. Biggest one as a female veteran, they have two exam rooms specifically for women. They've never had that before. Um, they don't even have that at Fort Harrison. So this is a, a big step for women veterans. In Great Falls, Isaiah Dunk, MTN News. Well, during last weekend's educational forum regarding interactions between law enforcement and people of color, presenters held Great Falls Police Department accountable for a lack of accessible data and over-policing of minorities within Great Falls. Today, GFPD responded to those claims with full transparency. GFPD announced that they've published reports from the past five years to their website in an effort to improve public access to information. They also provided an explanation for figures which suggested that they discouraged discriminated against people of color, particularly the local Native American population. Police Chief David Bowen said the apparent disproportion uh, of, of traffic stops for Native Americans versus whites can be attributed to inaccurate populations counts, not intentional acts of racial profiling. The community activist and forum organizer acknowledged GFPD's response as a pos positive step towards equality. It's a good first step. There's a lot of things that we want to get done, and so we'd like to continue the dialogue and maybe collaborate on an actionable plans such as racial bias training, um, increasing the amount of data that's actually reported, and maybe coming up with a comprehensive plan to include diversity, basically Blacks, ind Indigenous, people of color on oversight um, boards. And Brennell hopes to speak with GFPD to discuss ways they can improve interactions between law enforcement and people of color in the near future. We track warmer weather through the weekend. Tomorrow starting out in the 70s and heading to the 90s. We track when cooler weather makes a return coming up after the break. Thanks. Storm Tracker weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Elizabeth Copeland. Welcome back on this Friday evening for North Central Northeast Montana, where we have some activity, not as much as yesterday, but we do have some thunderstorms rumbling through. A lot of those are developing across southwest Montana, closer to Butte. Helena seeing a storm just to our northwest, mostly across the Rocky Mountain front there, as some storms brew from this afternoon heat. We are expecting a couple more storms tonight across the northeast corner, and as that moisture shifts, we'll start seeing a few of those pop up a little later on this evening, but the main concentration is right across north central Montana and the Rocky Mountain front where again these little storms are popping up. They're not producing much rain. They are producing some cloud to ground lightning though. So if you hear some rumbles of thunder, definitely get inside because some of that lightning is striking the ground just south of Haver and that's kind of the trend we expect out of most of these storms for the evening. So right now, other than where those very spotty storms are developing, it's hot out there across the capital city, 95 degrees closer to that 89 degree mark, a little cooler for the northeast corner. Otherwise, we're holding steady in those 90s 
90s and we're going to still see those very warm and dry temperature or warm temperatures and dry conditions really settle in over the next few days. So right now in Helena, 18% relative humidity. Those storms stay to our north right now, meaning that dry air is settling in, seeing a lot of that blue sky, mostly out of the capital city this afternoon. And we'll have a little more moisture across the northeast. Again, only to fuel that afternoon evening storm as we head through tonight which we'll be monitoring for you coming up here shortly. So other than that, out of our US Bank ICAM in Great Falls, lots of blue sky today. Looking down, I believe that's central, seeing a lot of that blue sky, not too many of those clouds in the forecast this evening. Again, a very isolated storm. If you're looking out there later this afternoon, you might see a little cumulonimbus cloud pop up in the distance, producing some light rain, some lightning as well. Otherwise, we stay mostly dry across the area and warm. Again, 90 degrees outside, feeling like 89. Visibility a clear 10 miles tonight as we keep those clear conditions in the forecast for the next several days. So really a lot of that moisture that moves in from northwest corner or excuse me, southwest corner starts to diminish overnight as we see mostly clear skies, a few pop up thunderstorms possible for the northeast corner. But by tomorrow morning, all that activity really subsides. We have a couple of clouds here and there, but our Saturday is going to be very warm and very dry once again, not looking at too many of those afternoon chances of storms brewing in our forecast. Matter of fact, most of those uh, storms in the activity stay once again to the southwest. There might be just a few isolated thunderstorms right across the Rocky Mountain front, but otherwise we stay very dry. Again, blue skies in our forecast tomorrow, and it's going to be another hot one. So if you do get out there and grill, make sure you take some extra water, not only for the grill, but for yourself this time, because temperatures are going to soar back into the mid 90s tomorrow afternoon, right about that 4 p.m. hour. So maybe getting out the grill a little later around 8 o'clock when we finally dip back down to the 80s or maybe even later next week when that cooler air finally settles in. So besides an isolated storm tomorrow, again, very isolated storms possible, we're going to start jumping right back to those low 90s and stay there until Monday afternoon. That's finally when we get some relief. Those 90s turn into 80s, low 80s, matter of fact, on Tuesday.